What's going on guys? John Logan here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to update our shopping cart summary page for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to update our shopping cart summary page. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, up until now, we've been working on sessions and updating our shopping cart. Now, we want to be able to click on this link here, go to our shopping cart summary page, and see what's in our shopping cart. So, later on, we'll make this to where we can remove things from the cart or add other things and all that good stuff. But for now, we just want to see what's in the cart on this page. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So, let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Batch Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I'm going to come over here to our cart app here, and let's come down here to our cart.py. And inside of here, we've got this add function that we created a couple of videos ago that allows us to add things. We've got this lend function that allows us to count up how many things are in the cart. Now we want to come down here and create another function that allows us to see what's in the cart exactly, right? To look up stuff in the cart. So I'm going to call this get underscore prods because we're going to get the products that are in the cart. And we want to pass in self as always. Now, remember, whenever we add something to the cart, it's adding the ID of that product. So the intro to Python book may be product number two. So that two gets added to the cart. So we can take that two and use it to look up the product and see exactly what product two is. It's, you know, the Python programming book or whatever. So let's do that now. Let's go product underscore IDs, and we want to get the product IDs that are in our cart. So here we could just call self.cart.keys. Now, why keys? So if we come down here to our store app and look in our templates and our product page. So when we go to our product page, remember the button grabs the product ID, and then we come down here to our jQuery, that product ID right here gets added and posted to our view, our cart add view. So if we go to our views.py and we pull up our cart add view, that product ID is getting added to our cart.add function. So if we go to our cart.py file, and here's that add function, you remember this product ID gets passed in a dictionary with also the price, right? But it's set up as a Python dictionary. So it's like uh, three and then the price, right? So the three is the key of the Python dictionary. So we can access those keys uh, by calling self.cart.keys. Basically, it just gets all the IDs that are in our shopping cart and it assigns it to this product IDs variable. Now that we have all of those in this variable, or I guess it's probably a list, we can look up the actual products. So here, let's say uh, get IDs from cart. And here, let's say use IDs to look up products in database model, right? So here I'm going to call this products. And this is going to be products dot objects dot filter. And we want to filter by ID in and set that equal to this. So this is more likely a list of product IDs, not such, not so much a variable, a list, but we're taking all of those keys, adding them to this, and then we're saying, hey, look through this, and all of the ones you find in here, return the products for that and add them to this products. So up here at the top, we need to be able to access our product model. So let's go from store.models, we want to import product. So store.models, because here's our store app, and inside of there we have models, right? And inside of this models.py is our product database stuff. So, okay, we've got that. We've now looked up all of the products that are in our cart. Now we just need to return our products. And let's say uh, return those looked up products. So now let's head over to our views.py in our cart app. And here is our cart summary page. And let's grab our cart. Let's get the cart. 
And so let's create a variable called cart. And it's just going to be cart. We also want to pass in the request. So we know, you know, it's the cart for this specific user that's looking up this page. And then here, let's create a variable called products or say cart products. And this is just going to be cart dot get underscore prods. So it's cart dot get prods because cart is our cart and that's our cart dot pi. And then we created this function, this method called get prods. And here we're just calling that function or that method get prods and we're passing it to this variable. So now we just need to pass this to the page itself. So we can do that in our regular context dictionary like we always do. So let's go ahead and save that. Now let's head over to our templates and look at our cart summary page. And let's uh, say test right here. Head back over to the website, hit reload. Okay, there it says test. That doesn't look great. So we're going to want to play around with this a little bit. So let's create first a line break and let's go div and give it a class of container. This is just a bootstrap thing. All righty. That looks good. Go ahead and save this. Head back over here, hit reload. Okay, so that looks a little better. Now let's, instead of it saying test here, let's see what that cart underscore prods actually is. So you can come back over here and this is just going to be an object, right? It, well, name products is not defined. Uh, let's see, what did we do here? Go back to reviews.py. Uh, uh, products equal product. Oh, <laughs> We imported product and here I called products. Oh, that should be product.object.filter. Okay, that should work. There we go. It reload. Oh no. And if we come back to our cart.py, oh, this should be underscore underscore ID and all the errors today. I'm filming this right before Thanksgiving. So there's a holiday coming up. So I'm like, ah, my mind's all over the place. So, okay, this needs to be two underscores here. And that's how Django works with things like that. Come back over here, hit reload. All right. So here again, we get this object, this query set, and you can see inside of here, we've got our Python programming and our tkinter programming, two products. Up here, our cart says two. So if we come back to home and click on Ruby programming and add to cart, now it says three. Now we have Python programming, tkinter programming, and Ruby programming. So, okay, that's cool. We know this worked. Now we just need to decide what we want to do with this. So let's loop through here. Let's say for product in cart underscore products, right? Get rid of that. Move this over. And we always want to right away end our for so we don't forget. And inside here, we could just pass in and say product. And let's put a line break here. So if we save this, come back over here, hit reload. You can see Python programming, tkinter programming, Ruby programming. Now we can call all of the things in our product. So if we come to our store, app here and our models.py and look in our product app. We have name, we have price, we have category, we have description, we have image, is sale, sale price. We can access all of these things. So if we wanted, for instance, the price, we could here put product.price, right? So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, right? Boom. So there we go. So we can access all those things. So what I'm going to do just to make it super easy is instead of doing this, Let's come back over to our product page and that's in our store templates product.html and let's come down here to where we're outputting the things on the screen and that's going to be this thing right here, this card MB thing. And if you don't remember, we can go back here, click on one of these. It's this whole card thing. Let's just grab this whole bit of code and put it on the shopping cart page. So we can do that. And so if I click here and then scroll down, we can see here is the closing div. So I want to copy all of this stuff. And there we go. Go ahead and just copy that. Head back over to our cart summary. And inside of our for loop here, we could just paste all this stuff in. So now if we come back over here, and actually after this, let's put a line break right there. We still have our in for right there. So, all right, great. Let's go ahead and save this. Come back over here and go to our cart summary page. And now we have listed all these things. Now, obviously we don't want this add to cart button because we've already added these things to our cart. So let's come down here and take that out. Uh, let's see, here's a button add to cart. So we can just take this out, save this, head back over here, hit reload. All right, so that's good. Uh, some of these have 
are sale prices. Some of them are not. So let's go to the home page. And I don't remember, oh, this PHP one. That one's on sale. Let's add this one to our cart, go to our page. And sure enough, it shows it as the sale price. So that's good. And we're looking good. Now we've got all of these things and it's working, but what happens if there's nothing in the cart? So let's right click and inspect and let's go to storage. Click on this guy, find our session ID and let's delete that. So now when we hit reload, our cart is now empty. And now when we go to this page, there's nothing here. So we need some logic in order to make sure, hey, is there even anything in the cart? If there isn't, let's put a little message saying, hey, there's nothing in the cart, right? That kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna come up here to the top where we have our for loop. And before the for loop, let's do an if statement. So let's go if cart underscore products. So if there are things in our cart products, then do all of this stuff. And we can tab this over to make it look nice. And then come down here to the end of our for loop. Else, let's just put out on the screen, there's nothing in your cart, dot, dot, dot. And then I'm gonna copy all of these line breaks and put those inside this section. And then of course, as always, we wanna end our if. All right, so, okay, let's go ahead and save this, add back over here, hit reload. There's nothing in your cart. Maybe we need some more line breaks. <laughs> Let's grab a couple more of these. There we go, save this. Push that down a little, whatever. So there's nothing in your cart. So let's go and add some things to our cart. Let's add one thing. There it is. Now we click on this. There we go. If we want to add some more things, uh, maybe this guy, go to our cart. And we've got two things now. We'll clean this up. We'll make this look a little nicer. We'll add some like remove buttons if you wanna remove a thing from a cart, but this video is getting a little bit long, so we'll do that in the next video. But yeah, starting to come along. So now we have pretty much almost fully functioning shopping cart. We can add things, we can't remove things yet, and we don't have like quantities yet. We might wanna change that around in case somebody wants to buy two books at a time or eight books at a time. We probably wanna account for that. But otherwise, this is coming right along and the heavy lifting is done adding carts and then accessing the cart. You now know how to do that. And uh, yeah, it took a few videos, but it wasn't too bad. It was a little bit, there's some jQuery in there that was like a little, uh, I don't know, you know, if you're not used to jQuery or JavaScript, but other than that, not too much that's all that difficult. And we're moving right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.